G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this video in the Free Math Worksheet series. This week is a follow-up video to last week's and it's looking at common fractions and we're looking at halves and fourths or quarters. Of course, fourths and quarters refer to the same fraction. It depends on where you live as to the common name for that. Um, I have to say, I think that in the United States, you've got the right idea. Calling them fourths relates them to the number four, um, which we don't have. We don't have that advantage in Australia and um, Britain and other countries. So we're going to look at the, if you like, the, the next step. So after looking at halves, the next most common fraction, the most um, frequently used fraction of course is fourths or quarters and so that's where we're going to next. So we're going to look at three different ways of modeling this with students and giving them some kinesthetic and visual ways of getting used to these fractions. So the first one is paper folding. So we'll start with an ordinary uh, rectangular piece of paper and ask them to fold it initially into halves so of course that's nice and easy. We want our students to get used to um, doing their mathematics carefully and accurately because that after all is the foundation of mathematics that there's a precision there and that's um, one of the aims in the Common Core Common Core State Standards for Maths in the United States is for students to develop precision in their number work, but we can do we can use precision in uh, fractions as well. So we want the edges to line up. We want students to be very careful about the folding. I've already folded this one, obviously. Um, and then once we've talked about halves, and of course different ways of folding the piece of paper, so we can fold it that way, we can fold it diagonally and so on. Um, once we have a half, we can then ask the students to fold it in half again. And of course, that's a nice easy one. Just make it into another smaller rectangle. Uh, but we could fold it diagonally, which is a tricky one, like so. That's interesting because the, t the edges don't match. They don't line up with each other because of the nature of the rectangular shape. And yet we can demonstrate that these are halves of the half, um, perhaps by cutting that out. Um, perhaps by a bit of logic and rotating the shape 180 degrees. So there are quite a lot of different concepts that we can approach using the paper folding method. Um, and once again, like last week's video, I talked about stretching the students' problem solving ability and their mathematical thinking. This is a really nice activity because of the further examples that students could find of halves and fourths or quarters by simply seeing how many different ways you can make um, the, new, the, the fractions by folding in different ways. And as I said last week, there are actually an infinite number of ways of folding or producing halves of a rectangle, so there must be an infinite number of ways of finding fourths or quarters as well. So paper folding is um, one method that we would recommend. Another one is to use number lines. So um, it's a fairly common activity, I think, to start with a number line and ask students to identify where they believe certain numbers would um, exist on the number line, and we can use that for fractions. Now in number terms, this would have to be zero and this would have to be one, but we're not really talking about that because this is for young children. They're not ready for the symbols. Um, we're not trying to build the conceptual understanding that it's an, an amount less than one as such. So we'll leave the numbers off, but we want the students to find the midpoint of the line. One question to ask, of course, is can you um, make a mark where you think the halfway point is? So we can ask them to basically eyeball it and estimate where they think the fractions are, halves and fourths or quarters. But another method is to use your fingers and start at either end, move your fingers together at a consistent speed, and of course that's the tricky part, and then mark where you get the result. Then of course we could say how could you use that method to find fourths or quarters, and of course again we do the same thing and we find half of a half, or halves of halves, um, to find the new fraction. Now as well as uh, as an extension, rather, of that idea, we could show the students a much shorter line and ask them to do, to do the same activity and a much longer line and do the same thing. 
which will help to reinforce the idea that the fraction is relative to the whole or the original piece that we're finding fractions of. So clearly fourths or quarters of this long line will be much bigger than these fourths or quarters up here and it relates to the line itself. So we don't want to confuse the young children but we do want them to um, understand the mathematical basis for the idea. That's why we don't just always for example use circles when we're looking at shapes and we're going to look at these shapes in a minute. If all our fractions are of a circle they could easily get the idea that this is what a quarter looks like and this is the shape of a quarter, sorry I should say fourth or quarter, that this is the shape of the fourth or quarter which is not true. This is a fourth or quarter of a circle so providing we um, accept that this shape is the whole then this is a fourth part of the whole. But if we start with a different whole, obviously the shape will be different. So we want the students to recognize that and to basically, again, as I said last time, generalize the concept. So the, a fourth actually means lots of different things depending on the context and specifically depending on the whole. Let's look quickly at shapes. We should give our students experience with a variety of shapes geometrical shapes that they can use to divide into halves and fourths or quarters. So um, I don't really need to do this. You can see what the, the um, answers will be. We're going to divide each one into halves. Then when we have a half, we'll divide the half into halves again. And once again, we can ask the students, are there different ways of dividing each shape into fourth parts and halves and that's that sort of thing. Probably the most interesting one, or there's a couple of interesting ones, but the most interesting I think is the equilateral triangle because although it may look as though it's fairly tricky, by making us an equilateral triangle inside it that connects together the midpoints of the lines, we make a fourth part of the uh, triangle. The other one that's a bit interesting I suppose is this one here, this being a rhombus and um, so we can make, this, th there are once again several ways of doing that. So that's the idea, we want to extend the students thinking by going just a little bit beyond halves to the new fraction and then we want to extend it further investigating fourths and quarters as much um, in as many different ways as we can to stretch their thinking, develop their mathematical understanding and so on. So that's it for this video, hope you found it useful and I'll talk to you next time.